everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. This should be a quick one today. Um, I wanted to try something and I'm actually doing an experiment, so I have no idea if this is going to work. But I want to make a mold, a silicone mold, out of a cookie cutter. And um, I have a theory of what I think should work. Um, I know the way that I make molds is not typical, <laughs> as I've been hearing in the comments, that uh, even just using an acrylic drawer like this um, from my vanity set is like unusual <laughs> to say the least, but it's really effective. So it works. So I wanted to try something else. And again, I don't know if it's going to work. And it's obviously not the proper way to do things. I'm sure. I'm sure professional mold makers out there <laughs> might be cringing, <laughs> but um, I'm going to try it anyway and see if it works. And uh, this is some, just a mold I'm making for myself. I'm not selling it or anything like that. So I just wanted to try it. If it doesn't work, it's fine. It's just for me. So um, anyway, so what I'm thinking to do is I want to make a mold of this. And um, I'm thinking that I'm going to basically pour. I'm going to have to do two pours. Now, this is the part I'm not sure if it would work because... Um, I'm assuming, I'm just, I did a little bit of research if silicone will stick to silicone, and I believe it will. Um, I'm not sure if it's similar to resin that, you know, if you pour it kind of close, you know, before the silicone fully cures, if um, it'll stick better. But that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to see if I can um, pour kind of a base layer of silicone in here, just a thin layer that would be like bottom or the back and then I'm going to place this on top and then and then um, pour a little bit more resin around it sorry not resin silicone around it and see if we can just kind of make ourselves a mold so that's the theory <laughs> hopefully it doesn't fail but this is what we're going to try so I'm using, um, if you saw my previous molding, mold making video, I'll, I'll just show a thumbnail up in the corner. I use the Mold Star. This is the package Ooh, here, the Mold Star, the uh, Slow 15. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm knocking everything over. Um, so I'm using that here. So there's an A and B part here. And I'm just going to be mixing. This is a small tray. I, last time I used a larger one. This one is just big enough for this cookie cutter and uh, I think I just got I got a set of these I think just on Amazon so if you guys are looking for that that's where it is and I'm just gonna be mixing up about two I already poured one part in here about two ounces to just kind of make that layer on the bottom so I'm gonna do that now we'll go into a quick time lapse and uh, we'll be back So I have my resin, uh, I'm going to keep saying resin, my silicone mixed here and I'm um, just going to make sure it's mixed thoroughly. There we go. Is it mixed thoroughly? Yeah, I think so. And uh, yeah, so we're going to put this in and we're going to do the bottom first. And uh, I know this is kind of backwards because normally the process is to put like a full item into you know, the actual item into the tray and then pour over top of it. And basically you're making the mold upside down. This time we're going to try to make the mold right side up. So, and again, <laughs> don't hate on me <laughs> if this is, you know, not the proper process because I'm just experimenting guys. I mean, you know, that's what I do. I like to experiment and try things that, you know, isn't maybe their normal way of doing things. So I'm just going to pour this in here and it may be a bit more than I need, but I just want to make sure we have a good base for it and uh, so let's just get all that in there and generally I for this type of silicone I can't speak for all different types of silicone but this one I haven't had too many issues with bubbles or anything and I don't use a pressure pot or anything like that I just uh, put it in here and let it sit so we'll just make sure we're Getting all the corners so we have a nice even mold. Spread it out over here a little bit. Yeah. So it kind of self, the bubbles kind of pop themselves. And even in this case, if they don't, really the middle area is the most important place. So what I want to do is um, 
let it sit. So it's four hours. So I want to let it sit for um, about two. I'm going to check it at two to see where it's at. And so I don't know if you can see, but the bubbles are kind of popping here. I don't know if the light is letting you see that, but uh, I don't know. But anyways, the bubbles are kind of popping on their own. Yeah. So anyway, so all the bubbles are popping there. So what I want to do is leave this for about two hours, about halfway. I'll check it to see if it's solidified, at least for the most part. And if yes, we'll come back. And then that's when I want to add this in there so it can kind of sit on top, maybe even push it in slightly and then pour around it again and kind of make the mold that way. So that's the plan. <laughs> we'll see how it works. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So it's been about an hour and I've been <laughs> kind of sitting here staring at this. So, and I took my tweezers and I've just kind of like pressed it and you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's, you know, it's still soft. Obviously it's not cured the way silicone needs to be cured, but it's not leaving an imprint anymore. So it's just enough, I think, to see if we can add another layer. Now, again, um, this is just an experiment. I have no idea <laughs> how it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my cookie cutter in and I'm going to try to see if I can press it. I don't think it's going to do a whole lot here by pressing it because again, it's not. Maybe I can do that a little bit. So this way it's kind of stuck. Um, right, so I have that and I might have too much silicone here, so I might have to make another mold afterwards, but um, I'm going to see if I can just kind of pour around it. So now one thing I am noticing here is because I've stuck the cookie cutter into the resin that's already there, um, what it's doing is it's pushing up the bottom layer of resin, uh, sorry, I keep saying resin, the silicone up. So that means that the mold will be indented so that, so that means that it's not, it might not be perfectly flat on that bottom side. It's going to be, have a slight, you know, inward dent instead of an outward dome or even just a flat surface. Um, I was thinking about this while I was waiting for, you know, the silicone to set is uh, what this might, ha what I might have to do, or it depends on, it depends on the person who's making it, I guess, and what they want this to look like. Um, I was thinking that if, even if this doesn't turn out perfect the way that I was hoping it does, it will give me something that I can pour resin into once it's cured. And then I can take that out. And then if I need to dome it or, you know, fix it in some way, the actual resin piece that I take out, then I could technically do this process again and make myself an even better mold. Um, for me personally, even if this is slightly indented, I don't think it's going to be an issue for me because I tend to, you guys know if you've been following me for a while, I tend to pour my resin, take it out, uh, unmold it out of the mold, then decorate it in some sense, and then have to go back in and top coat it or dome coat it or flood coat it or whatever you want to call it um, afterwards anyway. So if it's slightly indented, that's not going to be an issue for me personally. But I think if you guys are wanting, you know, the perfect type of mold that's going to uh, work the way you want and then you can reuse it many times, you could do that where you actually like take whatever you get out of this, you pour your resin into it and then um, create like a, almost like a new master or a new, uh, uh, what do they call it, a blank? Like a new blank, and then you would now mold that. Now again, this is not an inexpensive process because obviously I'm using silicone here, but it's just an idea, just a way to kind of get a custom mold to something maybe that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise, especially in these kind of cookie cutter shapes. 
Um, obviously, if you have like a 3D printer or some other access to actually making the shapes, um, then you won't kind of eliminate this step. But I just want to test it out, see how it works. So, and again, for me, I don't know if I would need to go into that next step because I think I would just use it as it is and then dome code it um, afterwards, whatever I get. So anyway, I'm going to leave to set this now for four hours and I'll come back and show you guys how it looks. Okay, so it is the next morning. <clears throat> I only need to leave this four hours, but I went to bed. <laughs> so it's been a lot longer, but let's see what we have. So let's see if we can separate this. <clears throat> oh, look at that. So there is a little spot here, and I knew that was going to happen because that's where the connector for the metal was. So it's right here. There was a little bit of a, you know, it's not as smooth. So I knew that was going to be there. But again, it's not a major concern for me. But overall, it looks pretty good. Now, there is an edge. Um, so a little bit of the silicone did sneak under the... Um, so snuck under the cookie cutter so I do have a little bit of a an edge under here but I'm gonna see how it looks when I pour it just might kind of have a cool border on it I'm not really sure how that's gonna work so we'll see how that goes with the resin when I put it in but let's get the whole thing out so. Oof. So there we go so yeah so you can see the I think you can see there's a bit of a cut line here uh, I'm, I'm not I'm just gonna leave it I like I said I'm not gonna I'll see what actually happens with the uh, you can see there it's the little bit of silicone snuck under the mold uh, sorry the cookie cutter so it kind of created a new meniscus layer and so it left a little bit of an edge but I'm gonna pour resin in it see how it looks and uh, see what we get it might be kind of neat I don't know so so let's go into time lapse and see what we get So I'm back. Uh, it's been a bunch of hours. I'm not sure how many, but so I poured this, um, a couple bubbles in here. Um, I had to pour this and literally like run <laughs> to go run some errands. So, um, I didn't get the chance to come back and kind of check to see if there's any bubble issues, but so we got a couple there, but overall seems okay. I haven't taken it out yet. So let's see what we get. All right. So there we go. And so it's a little bit of a deeper pour. Oh, we got a broken piece here. So as you can see, there is a little bit of that. So that little bit of an edge that was there inside, it did, obviously the resin did, did get in there, but so it created a little bit of a border. But again, in my situation, I'm perfectly okay with that, honestly, because I'm just gonna cut those off. I'm gonna trim them off and should look still pretty good. Um, let's see. Here, just trim that off, like so. So there we go. There we go. So, so not too bad actually. Like I said, it. Oh, I missed a piece there. I'll fix that. Um, get rid of that guy. So there. So yeah, so it actually created a nice edge. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, I trimmed it, but it actually kind of created a nice little rounded edge there. So it looks like it's a little bit beveled besides a little bit that I had to trim off. But I think otherwise it looks really cool. I don't have to pour it as thick either. This one I poured just to kind of fill the mold, but I don't know if I would have to do that generally. Um, because as you can see, I got a little bit of bubbling in here and that's usually because the pour was getting a little bit too thick for the resin I was using. So that's why that was happening. But otherwise, I think this looks really neat. Uh, so what we could do with something like this is um, I was thinking of maybe putting, you know, I could put a little sticker on here. 
my if you saw my last one of my last uh, videos on ornaments I was using these stickers to make some pretty ones and or oh, oh my gosh I'm dropping everything um you could even like you know put a name on here make them little name plates for a wedding or something like that or for favors so there's lots of options for something like this i just love this shape and i do have a bunch of other ones like i have this one and this one and this one so um yeah so there's lots of options uh, i'm probably gonna be making molds of all of these just so i have all the different fun shapes and like i said i can make little ornaments or whatever out of them all right, so I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a comment down below. If you have any ideas, or if you're a mold maker, or you've had experience with molds, and you want to send in, uh, just kind of comment below any other ideas you have, or experiences you have of doing something similar to this, where you're taking kind of a shape that isn't, that doesn't have a base to it, or you know, isn't really meant for resin, and you're able to make a mold out of it, and you want to share that with the rest of us, share with the class, <laughs> then uh, please do so in the comments below because I know some people are, are very interested in things like this because sometimes you find shapes that you would love for resin and it's just not possible with the way that they are currently made. And uh, I'm thinking like something like this, making a mold out of it would be a really great way to do that. And I really like how this turned out. Like, honestly, I think it's, it's really great. Um, you know, a little bit, you know, like I said, not perfect. And I know for all the you know, people who are professional mold makers, they might be, again, might be cringing. I'm really sorry for that. But um, I do like for me personally, um, just to make for myself, I really like how these turned out. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching to the end of the video. If you want to find any, find me on any of my socials, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, my website, um, if you want to send me a coffee or um, any of those things, my beacons link is in the description under the video. And um, yeah, and thank you to all those who have been sending in uh, coffees and super chats and all those wonderful things. It's so exciting <laughs> to see those come through and it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. But anyways, guys, I'm going to get going and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.